Hey everyone, welcome back to the NFA Review Channel. It's been quite a while since you guys have seen me here in the studio. If you've been watching the channel, you know we just wrapped up a new series called Guess the Suppressor. We did uh, 22 suppressors, 9mm and 45, all pistol cans. And you guys did a really good job of discerning the tone between all the suppressors each day. So that was a pretty fun little series. But now we are back here in the studio, back in business, to review a new suppressor on the market, the AB Suppressor Raptor 762. Now the company name might sound new to you guys, but this is formerly AeroCharger, and if you guys have been coming to my events the past couple years, AeroCharger has actually been out. They've been a sponsor at one of the events. They actually gave away a ton of suppressors for the raffle, so that was pretty cool of them to do. So let's go ahead and dive into their new suppressor here. There is a lot to cover. It's a pretty cool can. We're gonna dive into all the details as usual here in the studio, and then we're gonna hit the range. All right, as we open the box here, we'll take a look at what it comes with. A little decal, takedown tool, and of course the suppressor. There probably was a manual, but I already checked it out and probably lost it already. <laughs> so let's go ahead and cover the specs and then we're gonna get into exactly what this series comprises of. Now, uh, this is their eight stack. We're gonna get to the stacks in a minute, but just for the specifications of today's video, we're gonna cover the specs on this exact unit which is, I guess you can call it the Raptor 8, or the Raptor 762 8 stack. So the overall length of this unit is 6.3 inches, has a diameter, all their stacks actually have the same diameter of 1.625 inches, and the weight of this suppressor with the flush mount installed is 7.8 ounces. Now if you add the uh, two inch reflex to the back, that weight's gonna go from 7.8 ounces to 12.1 ounces. This is constructed 100% of titanium, everything. The whole entire suppressor, the reflex mounts, everything. The flush mount, 100% titanium. Your finish is gonna be a matte, high temperature black Cerakote, and your barrel ratings are as follows. Uh, 10 and a half inch for your 556, 16 inches for your 308, and any magnum calibers, your minimum barrel length is going to be 24 inches. Uh, let's go ahead and cover the decibel reduction for, again, this setup. So a eight stack with a two inch reflex. Uh, 300 blackout on a 16 inch barrel with 200 grain subsonic projectiles. It's gonna average 111 decibels at the shooter's ear. 308 Winchester, 18 inch barrel with 147 grain supersonic rounds. It's gonna average in at 128 decibels, again, at the shooter's ear. And uh, 3378 Weatherby with 180 grain uh, projectiles, it's gonna average in at 133 decibels at the shooter's ear. So pretty quiet suppressor and reflex cans usually are. Um, again, let's see, uh, what do we miss here on the specs? It is full auto rated. Of course, you wanna stay within the guidelines of your mineral and barrel length requirements. And anytime you're dealing with 100% titanium, guys, you're gonna wanna allow some cool down, okay? Yes, it's full auto rated, but I wouldn't take really any suppressor out there and just do mag dump after mag dump after mag dump without allowing a cool down period. It's just very abusive to the can, to the stack, to your, to your finish, especially you'll burn all that off, uh, high temperature or not. So do mag dump, let it cool. Uh, but of course, this suppressor, again, is really not designed for uh, mag dumps on SBRs. This is more uh, for woods walk, hunting, precision guns, stuff like that, where uh, lightweight and overall length is a huge consideration uh, as well as back pressure. So we're going to cover that here in just a second. But before we do, uh, the uh, MSRP again of the eight stack is $1,035. And then the reflex mounts here, I'm going to show you in a second, all depending on uh, no matter the length of the reflex, it retails in at $265. So let's go ahead and show you exactly what I'm talking about here with the reflex mount. So the whole name of the game with this suppressor is modularity and setting it up to uh, your exact platform and what you need to use the suppressor for that day. So this is a reflex mount. Now, uh, I'm gonna assume if you're here on my channel and you're watching a review on this suppressor, you already know what reflex means. If you don't, 
go check out my video, everything you need to know about suppressors. And I'm pretty sure I cover it in there. If not, you'll get the general gist of it from this video. So anytime you add a reflex to a suppressor, you're getting free volume, which is going to lower the back pressure on the can, which inherently lowers the tone. So, uh, and it's free real estate. See, this is the muzzle mount here that's on the suppressor now. So that's going to be your overall length added to the end of the barrel on the gun. Then if you wanted more suppression, you can add the module, but all this is going to add length behind the thread line. Okay. So as long as you have free space real estate, meaning you don't have a hand guard with a smaller inner diameter than the outer diameter of the reflex, meaning it won't hit it. It can slide underneath the tube, say on an AR-15 precision gun, something like that. Of course, if you have a uh, bolt gun, I don't know if this is in frame really, but this is a Ruger American 300 blackout. We'll be using that today. Uh, this will actually reflex back over the barrel. And I'll show you some close-ups here of the reflex. You have four ports here. So when the projectile goes through here and into the first section of the suppressor, you're going to have a lot of the gas once it builds up pressure against the first spiral baffle here. We'll cover that in a second. That's going to send the gas backwards through one of these or all of these four ports. And this is sealed. So you have about the thickness of that right there. And all this is air volume around your barrel. So that's going to help with suppression and back pressure. Now, as far as the baffle stack design, as you probably guessed, this is a tubeless design. There's no external smooth tube over here. What you see is what you get. These are uh, full circumference welded. Uh, it is argon back purged. When they do the welding, again, all full titanium. What you're looking at here is actually each individual baffle, or as they call it, spirals. Uh, I'll show you a cutaway actually on their webpage. And it shows you that their design, as they see it, actually uses more energy uh, when dispersing the gases in the can before it exits the muzzle. Now anytime you do that, anytime you can exert energy before it leaves here, you're going to have a quieter report when the gas leaves. Okay, The whole name of the game is to get the gas as uh, slow moving and cool as you can before it exits and that's going to lower your overall uh, report of the gunshot. So again, I'll show you a close up here on their website of a cutaway video that they did and it shows exactly where the projectile goes down the middle and you can see how the gas will actually have a spiral effect spin and slow down before it exits. Um, this is not a totally new baffle design. A lot of the old Maxim suppressors kind of look like this. I, theirs is a little bit more modern, probably a lot more efficient, certainly a lot stronger. So you're probably wondering you know, what guns you can use these on. So the suppressor body itself is sold in what they call a stack system. So anytime you say uh, eight, you're, you're discussing the stack. Okay, you're referencing the stack. You're not discussing the act that this is an eight inch long tube. And they also sell it in 5.56, 7.62, and 3.38 Lapua version. So <laughs> there is a lot of modularity here. You just gotta decide which base unit you want. I would say a lot of you guys probably aren't shooting 338 Lapua. I wouldn't want a bore aperture that large if I'm shooting normal calibers like 308, 300 blackout, and 556. So I would say that 762 is probably a good middle ground. So what stack lengths do they offer? Well, they offer a 2, 4, 6, and 8, and 10. Yeah, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10 stacks or baffles. So this, the one they shipped to me for review here is a 8 stack. So more towards the end, not, it's not the longest one they make, not the shortest one they make, and then they sent a two inch reflex. Now they also have, of course, the flush that they shift with. Okay, it's not gonna add any additional help there. A three inch, a four, and a five. Okay, so I guess the easiest way to remember it is that the spirals go up by twos, and then this goes up by one. So two, four, six, eight, and 10 for the suppressor itself, and then, uh, two, three, four, and five for the reflex length. So this, again, this is the two inch with the eight stack suppressor. So probably gonna give the most suppression possible and back pressure without sacrificing something really long and unwieldy on the end of the gun. I wanted to mention again that the reflex actually, they pretty much thought of everything here. The reflex is 
laser engraved here, 762, 5 eighths by 24 is gonna be your thread pitch. But they also thought about their, their diameter of the barrels. So you're gonna have a three quarter inch width reflex and a one inch width reflex for those large bull barrels out there. And this two inch reflex will fit perfectly on this uh, Ruger 300 blackout gun that we're gonna be using out in the range. It will not, however, fit on this weapon clear. Let me throw this bipod down and help me stabilize this thing. It will not, however, fit against this bull barrel. This is a wider bull barrel and you can see it bottoms out here. So for this particular host on the range today, this is a Remington 700 in a Accuracy International stock. I want to say it's a 16 inch barrel. This is one of those AAC guns from back in the day that's been highly modified. So 308, we're going to be shooting it with just the eight stack and the flush mount. And then we're going to throw the reflex on and shoot it on the 300 blackout, which I'm sure is going to be stupid quiet. All right, just a real quick visual aid again on the reflex design, and then we'll go ahead and hit the range. I also wanted to show you guys how to use the takedown tool. Pretty self-explanatory, but some notes here I wanted to show you guys. So have a little card here they sent with it. It's pretty cool. So basically, uh, as an aid here, you guys can see where the muzzle would be zeroed out right here at the muzzle line, and then everything added past this would be suppressor length added to your firearm. Everything behind it is free real estate, as you can see on this particular host, we can put a four inch reflex on here just fine, have no problems. Of course, I would need the larger one inch bull reflex for it. Uh, so this would be a direct mount like you saw earlier. Now, take it apart, pretty simple. You have uh, some spanner pins here. Go ahead and loosen the flush mount. Again, five eighths by 24. And I noticed earlier, I wanted to make note of this, that they thought ahead and they put in wrench flats on the inside of this mount. So if you go to take this off from extended shooting session and this sucker is welded on there pretty good and you go to remove it, but your suppressor body comes loose and leaving your mount stuck to your gun, you can grab a wrench and still remove this from your firearm. So they definitely thought of that. It's almost like shooters designed this suppressor. Uh, so let's go ahead and move this out of the way and I wanna show you the reflex on the Ruger American here. I'm sure you guys have already got the gist of what I'm illustrating, but I want to show you anyway. So we'll go ahead and I guess we can go ahead and add this on there. So I'll show you that way. So again, this firearm could hold a four inch reflex. I'll go ahead and add the reflex on here. I want to show you what it looks like. Now you could technically shoot it like this. I guess we should try that, huh? Probably won't do anything. Maybe act like a muzzle break almost. It almost timed at 12 o'clock just by luck's sake. So the threads are just inside there. Let's see, let me line it up. Yeah, so there's your two inch reflex there. And then of course we add the suppressor. Let me open the bolt because I'm putting my hand right in front of the muzzle and you're not supposed to do that. Get that nice and tight on there. Okay. And again, you can see the weld line here is basically where the muzzle was. And there you have it. So pretty cool. I just wanted to kind of illustrate that. Again, let's see what happens when we uh, remove this thing. If you grab it, of course, by the reflex, you'll remove the whole thing. If you grab it by the can, you would risk um, removing just the suppressor, leaving the reflex mount behind, which you could do. Uh, they do also have interchangeable end caps as well. I assume you could put a 5.56 end cap on here, shoot it on 5.56. Tightening up that bore aperture is gonna really help with suppression. You have no idea how much that comes into play. You can drop a lot of decibels by tightening up that bore aperture. Again, that's why wipes work so well on the end of the suppressor. So they probably sell other ones that you can throw on there. Again, you would use the same takedown tool to tighten it or loosen it. It's a little loose, so I'm gonna snug it. And I believe that about wraps up the studio portion. I think you guys got the gist of it. Let's go ahead and hit the range and uh, let's shoot it on 300 blackout and 308 and see what it sounds like. Let's go ahead and get to it.
All right, well, we made it out to the range, guys. Before we get started, a couple uh, notes here I wanted to tell you and some interesting news that has transpired between the studio and here on the range. So uh, first things first, beautiful weather out today. Weather is 60 degrees. It is very windy though. That's a problem. I'm sure my uh, phone's picking up a lot of wind here. I'm trying to I'm trying to cut my hand so you're not annoyed. Okay, so got the dead cat on the uh, microphone. We're gonna try to do the best we can to capture those shots nice and clear and concise so you can hear the tone of this new suppressor. Uh, speaking of which, uh, the news is I spoke with AB Suppressor to offer my patrons something special, something that nobody else can get. So we put together a package of a limited run of 25 Raptors. It's gonna come in the same configuration as this here. So you're gonna get the eight stack with the two inch reflex. You're gonna get that measuring card I used for the B-roll in the studio. You're gonna get a tactical salt and pepper shaker that matches the suppressor, stickers, hat, all that stuff for I think the discount comes out to like 15% off MSRP and you get all the other stuff for free. It's all included. So it's a package deal. I just made a post about it on my Patreon for my gold members. They are eligible to buy that at the discount. So I'm really excited about that. Wanted to show you. Salt and pepper shakers are going to have my logo on it. Not this one. It's going to have my new one. And so is the suppressor. And we're going to do a special serial number run. They're still voting on it right now on Patreon. We might do like the user's last name slash NFA and then like 001 or whatever, or we might just do uh, NFA review gold 001, 002, something like that. Anyway, just want to kind of give you guys that update. I think it's pretty cool. This is something I'm going to try to do with other companies that I film with. I think it's a really neat thing to do and it makes that suppressor extra special. Definitely a better price and you get all the other free swag with it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Damn.
God, that's loud. Okay, so final thoughts. This Raptor performed on a level I was not prepared to deal with today. So I came out here with an open mind, you know, new company, new design. The designs, you know, love it or hate it, you know, put your jokes in the comment section below, blah, 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 we've all heard it. Uh, if you don't like the way it looks, you can put a Coltac suppressor cover on it. Um, one of the guys commented last night that it looks like an M203 grenade launcher and now I kind of like the way it looks even more. So I don't really care what it looks like if it performs like it just did. And I would put the 300 Blackout with the Reflex on in the same exact category as the Energetic Armament Vox S with a brand new wipe. It's that quiet. Um, you can literally hear the firing pin snap the back of the casing with just this one. I'm gonna ask him to send me the uh, four inch reflex so I can see what that sounds like. I mean, that's gotta be ridiculous. I'm sure there's a law of diminishing returns there somewhere. I kinda wanna find it. Now, as far as the pitch is concerned, you know, you of course had a, a low deep tone with the 300 blackout. Now the 308 was interesting. The pitch, the frequency was a little higher, not uncomfortable to my ear, but it sounded completely different than the 300 blackout. And it had a really smooth, clean, like, tweet to it. It's kind of hard to put into words. I can't describe it. You just got to shoot it in person. It's, I don't know if it's the ammo or the host that I was shooting combined with the suppressor, but it sounded really neat. Um, typically, higher the frequency, the less chance you'll hear it over distance because the higher the frequency, the faster the sound waves drop off. Does that make any sense? So, you know, that's why you can hear subwoofer from far away because it's lower frequency. They spread out. You can hear them over time and distance much easier than a higher pitch. Um, it wasn't that high of a pitch. It wasn't like squeaky, like shrieky. I don't know. It's really hard to explain, guys. Um, I'm going to have a Patreon shoot out here this month. I'm bringing the sucker out here and I'm going to get some more footage of them shooting it here out on the range in person and kind of get their thoughts on it because... I'm telling you right now, I was not prepared for how good this thing sounded. So big, big kudos to AB suppressors and uh, anyone that picks up one of these things. I mean, it's, you guys have been watching me for years. You know, I typically don't carry on about how something sounds. You know, I'll give you my, you know, my opinion real quick on it. Uh, this thing was really, really cool. Uh, so I'm kind of really want all the sizes here so I could, you know, tinker around and figure out what it sounds like. You know, there's a lot of cans coming out like that right now. You know, the Novus, that's another can you can tinker with. So pretty cool times we're living in, guys. Pretty cool times. So hope you guys enjoy the video for our ammo on the 300 Blackout. We were shooting Hush. Um, I would give the slight edge to discrete ballistics subsonics, but I ran out of that. I have no more. So this is old stockpile I have been using that. And then today we did the uh, Winchester uh, 147 grain stuff you can find at Walmart back in the day because uh, that's what they tested with sounded great so I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video today I hope the microphone worked well I was reviewing it in between shots on my earbuds and the dead cat did a pretty good job at muting those uh, gusts of wind that would just come out of nowhere so hopefully everything sounds good when I get home today to edit this video for you guys hope you enjoyed the video if you're a patron on patreon thank you so much because I'm about to run out of ammo and I'm, I don't know where I'm going to find it, but it's going to cost me a lot of money to re-up so I can keep doing these videos for you guys. So to all my gold members out there, you guys rock. I hope to see you guys all out here on my range in November for our Patreon only shoot. And if you don't follow along on Instagram, I'll go ahead and put that link below, Facebook, all those other social media sites. You can keep up on what is happening and what is coming up in the pipeline here on NFA Review Channel. 
Hopefully you liked the video, click that like button. It does help us in the YouTube search bar. And of course, smash that subscribe button if this is your first day on the channel. See you next time.